Uh, Hello. Oh, hi, Gail. How are you? Okay. I'm all right. Hi. Hi, everybody. I just stopped by. I, I had sent a note to Gail. She probably hasn't even had it yet, but I was, uh, I just mentioned that I'm going to step back from, from the broadband committee and just wanted to say you guys oh. are doing such a great job and Gail is running it so smoothly. So. Indeed. <laughs> Well, th well, thank you so much, Kenton. Um, thank you for all of your involvement and service over the last many years. I really appreciated the business um, acumen that you brought to it, and and you know challenges and the and the questions to help us make better decisions. Um, so thank you so much. Oh, it's, um, it's been a real pleasure. It's a, it's a fantastic team that everybody's together. And the note just basically says, I mean, my contribution is is virtually nothing at this point, really. And, and so uh, until such time, I'm available anytime. I said, to keep on email for a while, just in case, in case something comes up, it, especially with the contract. We worked as a team last time on the contract. So we did, you were, you were uh, super helpful. I would, I, I will reach out to you when yeah. we get further along to, cause I'd, I'd love some more brains on that one. Um, about how, how we're going to approach it and if we're going to extend it or go out a bit again. So um, I'll reach out to you, but again, um, go enjoy your life. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> the summer here we go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I I, I'll see everybody around. It's not like I'm going anywhere. Yeah, so. yeah. I can't, uh, do, you, uh, do you want to continue to receive minutes from me? Sure, sure for, a, for a while, if I, the better I stay informed, the better if, we, if, if okay. something does come up or, or particularly with the contract and just keep abreast of what's going on. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll I'll continue to send you minutes then. I really appreciate it. A little it. light light reading, light holiday reading there. <laughs> That'll be good for you. <laughs> Have a good meeting, everybody. All right. Okay. Thanks, Ken. Bye bye. Bye bye. I hope you're all appreciating the mountain laurel, which is magnificent this year. I've never seen it as- I, as I am, yes. Yeah. It, it, so it's everywhere. A, this is an on year for laurel and, uh, and it's, uh, it's off the charts. It is, we thought it was yeah. something we were doing, but- No, no, it, it, it <laughs> usually it cycles every two to three years, but, and I knew last year was a down year. So I, I thought this year would be good, but it's even better than ever. I went yeah. for a long, a long walk today out in, out in the Quabbin. Well, not in the Quabbin area, but in the, um, you know, along um, Mount Mineral Ridge and just to take a look at the Laurel, which doesn't last very long, but it's, it's, it's quite something to watch. A lot of ticks too. Let me tell you, I, I have Ooh, never yes. seen the ticks this year. It's just been awful. I can't, yeah. you know, I picked four or five of them off of me today and I didn't, you know, I don't know. Every time I go out into the garden, it's, it's, it's a risky proposition. Even, even, even very, very local and not, and not traveling through the woods all that much, but um, they're just, uh, well, the wet weather is, has brought them out, but. <clears throat> Agreed. I've, uh, every time I, I go out, um, I've been pulling them off. Yeah. Um, I uh, had a horrible experience in Petersham at one of the trustees properties that had like a nice mowed path but it was a grassy field and oh. I thought well I'll just stick to the middle it'll be fine I pulled off 21 20 wow. I was I was revolted I was oh, like I was, oh that's awful it was horrible I'm never going back there again <laughs> <laughs> oh no yeah yeah they're like they're like I, I, my friend said she thinks I stepped on a nest and they just oh, wow. like, they were like filling my shoes. Uh, huh. Yeah, it was horrible. Well, grassy areas are a problem in any case, but yeah, but 21, I mean, that's, that's, that's yeah. quite a record. Where was this? Peter's Ham Peter's at the trustees property, like right in the center of town there. Mm. Yeah. Apparently they do have nests. So uh, they, they, I found one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I think this is it. Um, we are um, reducing more and more. Um, uh, Graham, you just missed it. Kent signed on for a moment to uh, say goodbye to us. He's he's going to sign off on the committee. Oh, okay. uh, but 
offered to help with the contract process, which I'm probably going to take him up on because he was really helpful with the, you know, last round of that. Um, was he, he, is he leaving the area or anything? Or just no, no, he no. just, he's, he's ready to move on and doesn't feel like he's making a huge contribution these days. So just wants to, you know, enjoy his summer. And um, so, um, yeah, we'll we'll keep going um, with our kind of core group here, and um, looks like we're going to be able to keep meeting online until September. Oh wow! So yeah, that's the um, how long the emergency order, and then they're working to extend it kind of forever, <laughs> um, <laughs> which I'm I'm thrilled about. Um, it's unclear if it's going to be something where you, some people have, like you have to have quorum on site, but you can um, stream in other people. All that's yet to be determined, but for the time being, we're fine. Um, so yeah, I hope, I hope we keep going here. Um, all right. And then other, other piece of news is um, our zoom meeting has to end by about quarter to seven tonight because it's going to be used by the school committee. So uh um we're, we're gonna we're gonna zip right through the meeting tonight that's what we're gonna do <laughs> that's fine yep all right first order of business is to approve the um minutes from may 19th i make a motion to do so second great uh, and jim did you yes get i i got your change yeah change. about yes. the um uh, 10, 325 or something like that yeah yeah okay that's that's in the minute that's it. That's been applied. Great. Okay. So, so it's uh, the minutes as amended. Yep. Minutes right. as amended with Steve's edit. Um, anything else about the minutes? No. All right. Um, all in favor of approving as amended? Aye. Great. Um, hut report. Uh, what do we got going on, Graham? Um, yes. Uh, there were about 50 um, help ticket things. Um, most of, about half of them, I reckon, were either the, um, the DHCP addressing issues uh, caused, um, you know, about a dozen and, uh, and then um, on those two occasions during the month. And then the other big one was when the whole, no, um, our big crash didn't happen till June. But, uh, but th there were two of those um, IP um, addressing things and uh, and so you know most of it was uh, uh, th that was half of half of all of them and the rest was just average you know um, uh, there was one um, uh, yeah I had a question about something um, uh, phone uh, I can't remember what the question was but anyhow yeah all, all good the huts as, as we saw during town meeting huts just bopping along fine so Great. Um, I was there on, well, here's a funny story. So the, um, we had an issue about a month ago when the um, uh, DHCP issues were happening and we lost um, connection and Matt Crocker entered the hut, said the alarm wasn't on and it should have a cell backup. So I called simply say if they ran some diagnosis, they said, you have an old base station who's cell module installed in it is bad oh, we're gonna no. we're gonna send you a new one so um they sent me a new one and so during town meeting on saturday i unplugged the old unit i plugged in the new unit ran a test cycle you know did the test everything worked great after town meeting i took the debris the box the old unit and I got in my car and I drove down to Amherst to go do some grocery shopping. And I hear a voice from the back seat start talking to me. <laughs> lost connection, lost connection, and starts making this heinous sound. <laughs> and I realized that I had thought when I plugged in the new unit, oh, this is just plug and play. This is so easy because the old unit that whole time was connected until I physically drove away with it. Um, and so it was, it was a funny moment. Um, so anyway, the next day I went back and fiddled with it for quite a while. 
if you go into the hut, you will notice the base station is now moved to the south corner up near, I don't know if you saw this, Graham, when you were in there, um, because I um, realized even though the cell module was working, we couldn't get a cell signal out because it was you know down low almost on the floor. Yeah. And Ugh. it's a concrete <clears throat> hut. Um, so the only, so I, um, <laughs> I, you know, I found a, 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 the strongest signal was on the South side. Um, yeah. Looking for signal. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And ran some tests with every like Wi-Fi completely turned off in there and it was able to message out. So anyway, a bit more of a process than I expected, but it's all set up. And, um, the, like I said, the unit is now placed in the back up near the ceiling instead of near the floor. So Gail, was the trouble with the old one, was it, was there really a problem with the old unit or was it just that it wasn't getting a cell signal? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. We I, don't, we don't know. I didn't question it. I'm like, I'm not undoing everything I just did. I, I, so unfortunately we produced a base station that's now going in a landfill either way. Uh, but I figure that, you know, part of the process was working with Simply Safe also to do a firmware update. Um, so it's the newest model. It's, you know, all. That's always good to, to be. Yeah. 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 And the police didn't chase you out of shoots. <laughs> police didn't chase me. I was like, oh, my God, what is going on? Um, Someone's yeah. all in the hut. Kept them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but all, all our systems worked well, like Crocker actually called the hut when I was fiddling around in there because they saw um, it manifested itself as a power outage because the, the, the base station completely lost connection. Um, so anyway, that was, that was the hut. Um, they would have been worried there'd been an insurrection during the, uh, during the town meeting. Right. <laughs> Hmm. So what else is going on? So all the um, Juniper Hut problems have been, as far as Crocker knows, eradicated through the, the um, new hardware and the firmware updates. Um, we know about the outage that was caused for eight, eight or so hours on Friday night. It was really unfortunate. Um, I've talked to a couple of you about it, but it was caused by scheduled work at Crown Castle um, that they never notified Crocker that it was happening. Mm -hmm. And so they physically cut some lines in order to do their maintenance. Um, so they've figured out the communication problem, why they didn't get notified. And Crocker lost all their circuits in Western Massachusetts we were out, Mount Washington was out and Crocker's tech support was out. So they did actually have backup um, tech support that's not connected to the Springfield circuit. They do have some agents that go through Amazon web services and those agents are able, you know, no matter what they're able to connect. The problem was none of those agents were assigned on Friday night. Uh, so they had it was just like this perfect storm so they didn't you know crown castle didn't notify them there just happened to be none of the um amazon web service agents assigned that were on that night um so they were able to get their other agents up and running in about an hour by going through new york instead but anyway they've identified that vulnerability um Gail, uh, just a question. Mm -hmm. What is the date on the uh, the Crown Castle outage? I just want that for the yep. for the minutes because people might want to know that. Friday, um, June fourth, from like ten a.m. to five a.m. And everyone will probably get an email, right? Like Friday. I did. They right, and they Crocker has already sent that out. Um, you will get a refund on your bill. I mean, it'll be like a dollar, but still. It's something. You know, it's, there's still a lot of things that are puzzling about this. And one of them is Crown Castle is a big operation that they would do scheduled maintenance that would involve cutting a cable and knocking things out for eight hours. You know, notified or not, 
they, sh it, you know, it's one thing if they're unplugging a unit and plugging a new one in, it's going to be like, you know, a minute to, to make this switch. Okay, you deal with that. But if it's a lengthy job like this, I mean, it really surprised me that big uh, outfit like Crown Castle didn't have a redundant line that they could have uh, run something through. Well, it might have been the cables itself. They've been replacing all those towers, right? What was so, it? Yeah, when, hmm, hmm. all the all the high high tension, yeah, whatever, whatever you yeah, call them. <laughs> they've been stringing new towers and new. Um, and I noticed that because I drive underneath them on the way to Greenfield, that that uh, you know that the that also included you know a new fiber line way up at the very top. So it's a different line. Yeah. The oh. Crown Castle one runs on its uh, national grids line. It's the old New England power line that runs the Deerfield Valley and across. That was rebuilt about twenty years ago, and then they're not working on that now. It's oh, really? Oh, lines runners down to Amherst that are the ones that are being rebuilt now. I see. Yeah, you know, um, uh, I think we did see a copy of, of what Crown Castle told HGE um, in there. Um, we're doing maintenance. I can't remember the details of it, but, um, but HGE did have, uh, you know, they had a workaround. They didn't lose uh, their customers. So somehow, somehow or other, um, it, it sounds like um, uh, Crocker really needs some other version of backup that, that, you know, some redundancy that we have at our heart. You know, we have MBI and we have Crown Castle. It seems like Cro Crocker needs to be looking at that aspect. Did um, Leverett yeah. stay up all through the, throughout this? HG it, had no problem at all and Leverett was up for the whole time, yeah. Wow. Because they, they knew it was coming, they appropriately switched to their backup. Um, wow. Wow. So... Yeah, really interesting. Yeah. But our backup from um, <laughs> didn't work either. From no, the 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 explanation is, and I did not know this, is that it's not actually a physical connection at our Shootsbury Town Hall location to MBI. In order to work, that connection has to go through Springfield, through Crocker, through Crocker. Yeah, yeah, through through, through Crocker. So it you know the same thing would have happened if we had been located in the new Salem hut or the Leverett hut. It would not have made a difference. But, but Gail, it was working, the MBI, as you pointed out, the MBI connection was working from Crocker uh, in Springfield when uh, initially, before we had Crown Castle. So, so we know that that, that, that thing, <laughs> MBI, from our hut to Crocker uh, works. So they, they got a, a, you know, the, the, the piece they didn't have, I think, is they said that their core became isolated. They didn't have any internet to put into our MBI circuit, it sounds like. So, right. right. Um, so, you know, that's a huge gap in their um, system. And, um, and uh, when, they, when they've solved it, they got to tell us how they've solved it. And then we've got to test it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that was the case. I mean, and MBI was was un, unaffected. It was that they couldn't um, uh, hook into it because the Crown Castle fiber cut aff just affected all of their operations. I don't I don't have the detailed like you know technicality of it, um, but it's that that the, the um, fiber maintenance took down their whole core circuit and somehow the MBI has to feed into that. So when that was gone, it was no, there's nowhere for it to go. I, yeah, I, I think they had no water to pour in the end of the pipe, but the pipe, right. we know the pipe runs from our hut yes. to their office, uh, to their uh, one Federal Street. And, and we know that it did work when there was something to pour in the other end. Um, but, you know, so, so I think um, like you said at the weekend that they, they've identified a huge, um, a huge inadequacy that they've got to, they've got to fix. Yeah, and um, a little bit later on in the meeting, I'll talk about some of the next steps of of what they're going to, what well they're they're doing what they're going to do, but there's other things that we need to do um, to prevent this in the future. Uh, but before we go there, that's um financial report, Steve. Anything to report no. besides a excellent job at town meeting getting our budget passed. Thank you.
Um, well, our current balance is 175,242. Um, I'm projecting a fiscal year end, end of fiscal year balance, the end of this month, of around 171,000. Um, maybe if some last minute bills come in and be a little under 170 or about 210,000, depending on when the um, next payment from Crocker, when the EFT clears the bank, Crocker makes the payment late in the month. You know, they don't make the payment until June 30th and it doesn't clear till July 1st. Then that money gets credited on, on the town accounting on the next fiscal year. This is one of the ridiculous aspects of the enterprise fund accounting that, uh, you know, we're either going to have a, a, a higher retained earnings or, but start the fiscal year off at zero or we'll, you know, first day of the fiscal year, we'll have $39,000 in our account. Um, mm. Yeah, it, it's a system we're operating under. But either way, we will have very significant retained earnings, you know, at least 170,000, which a year from now at town meeting, we can ask to have applied to the uh, band payment in August of 2022, which at that point we should be able to pay that, uh, that debt off completely. Fantastic. Gail, as long as I've got you, did you see my email about simply safe not being able to access yeah that this is just getting so painful steve let me put it on my list um to in the in the um like on the 10th of the month or so let me just run off a um invoice and i'll just email it to you every day on the every month on the 10th okay um i think i think these pro you know we've tried to solve them numerous times and it uh because you log in so seldomly, you can't remember your device and... Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was just yeah. in last month and so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it, it only, you know, it, it takes me three minutes maybe to, to do Unless that. Unless maybe it's that new... Uh, the new <laughs> it could have, it could have done, been the base station. Yeah, we never know, we never know. Um, if you could get the current one to me, Quickly, I want to take it up the town hall, to take the bills to the town hall tomorrow because Friday is now uh, a holiday. It's Juneteenth is being yeah. celebrated on Friday. If I don't get those bills in there soon enough in the drop box, it doesn't get to Gail Weiss in time. And so, da, 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 da. no worries. I'll do it tonight after the meeting. Okay. Steve, could you give me that? Uh, uh, the number that you started off with, right? You know, the first number you gave me. Uh, uh, 175,242. Once, and that's going to become retained earnings. So the, well, that's the current balance right now. So, so we have a 175,242 in our account. Right now, yeah. Mm -hmm. There are some bills to be paid. Um, so, Projecting the year-end fiscal year-end balance of around one hundred seventy thousand, which will which will become retained earnings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> don't worry about me. <laughs> continue, okay. continue. Okay, all right. I'm just sort of. That, that's it for me. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, all right, I'll move on to manager report. So a couple of things here. Um, one is um, I want to 
have a discussion about how we're handling new installations. Um, our current policy is that a new installation has to, or, or a <clears throat> homeowner has to cover everything involved with that new installation. So if obviously they cover everything from the curb to the, ho to the home, um, and that includes if they need trenching, if they need aerial, whatever it is, it's on the homeowner. We subsidize that with a $300 offset. But if a new MST is needed because we've run out of ports in their area, um, we always have, we're gonna pretty much always have enough spare fiber unless zoning laws get changed radically in Chutesbury. But sometimes there's not a spare port for a new home. Um, and we've had two situations where this has happened already. And if that's the case, the policy is to make the customer pay for that. Um, so they have to pay for the new MST, for the splice and for the testing. Um, so we um, just had an issue at the, hab the new Habitat uh, for Humanity home where they were given a quote for installation to cover from the curb to the home and everything's good. They signed it, they're like, great, we'll pay for it. And then later, we found out that there is no fiber spliced to the available port in the MST. So here's a situation where there is an MST, but there's not fiber splicers, just a spare port. So um, that needed to happen before the installation takes place. So I've made an executive decision, like we're not gonna go back to the customer and say, well, actually it's gonna be more than what we quoted for you. You have to pay this extra. That's not right. We, we've already given them a quote, they've already signed it. Um, but it's made me think about, I'm wondering if that, like this should actually be our policy going forward. Um, installations are already very expensive. Um, and for like new home builds, they're not gonna happen very often. Um, and um, it's not hard to separate, like parse out these expenses because all that MST and splicing work has to happen before installation day anyway. So it's, and um, Tim pointed out that it's really work on our network, you know, like our mainline network. It's not really like going to the homeowner. It's, it's um, something that is on our main line. So mm -hmm. um, the gotcha thing I, I would see here is if there's a multi-unit development that ever happens in Shootsbury, you know, like, that just say, um, you know, there's like, you know, a 15 apartment complex or something, or a place like Orchard Hill that gets developed. Um, so we could sure. add into the policy that this only applies for single family homes, not multi dwelling units. Those will be dealt with an, as a, you know, in individually. So I guess what I'm suggesting is we make a policy change to installations that if there's any mainline work that needs to happen to make that installation so, whether it be MST or splicing work or running new fiber, that's on the MLP. The customer only covers anything from MST to home, including in home. Thoughts? Yeah, that, that was my initial take as soon as you described this situation that, well, Gee, you know, that, that work, the splice to the MST, uh, that's our network. That's not a drop to the home. So I think that is legitimate for, uh, for us to pay. And that's probably the way we should do it. And that the customer pays for the drop to the home and all associated costs with that drop. But this would be for, um, for single homeowner installations as opposed to an apartment complex or something like that where they would need many more than just one. Right, that, yeah. Right, so um, I'll, I'll see if I can I word, word this. about this apartment complex? Well, I, I mean, I, 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 it, it would be good to distinguish between the two, I think, because I mean, if someone was putting in a development um, and um, I mean, I can think of a few situations where that where that might have been an issue in the past and could be an issue in the future. Um, I I don't know, but but you know, yeah. but 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 just for a brand new home on on some street in 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 
in uh, in Shutesbury, where we have to screw around with the MST situation, then that should be on us. But the rest of it, if if it was a more of a development kind of situation where there was a, another street, I mean, who knows what's going to happen? But you know that that I think should be, you know, should be on the on the developer as opposed to on us. That that would be my suggestion. Yeah. Well, here's another instance: the uh, solar solar farms, right? Oh boy. Right. So. Uh, uh, well, they the should solar do farm. That. That's a different they piece. That's, on <laughs> that's a that's a business. Um, install and i think the rules can be different for businesses yeah right but we should we should spell that out um yeah, yeah. and in, yes, in this um so so i i think this is fine i think single family home i think duplexes probably are also in that category duplexes are going to be often lower on the lower income side of things and i don't really want to penalize well, it's also typically a single drop to a duplex true so. There's one drop that they're more likely to have to upgrade the MST because there's two, there's actually two. Yeah. Plugs, they're still right? there, right, two exactly. Plugs, there's still two feet. MST. But the drop is usually only one drop line going in. Right, yeah, no, that- Well, that might even be true for a, it might be one drop line for a 15 unit apartment building too. That's not the point. Hmm. But it's a much bigger MST, yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's gonna have a big impact on the MST, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I, the, the utility uh, going along the, you know, the main line of any utility, they typically, you know, they'll go one pole and they won't charge you for that, but they, they won't go, they, they do charge for uh, extending the system. So, so yeah, so, why don't you write up a proposal? Uh, you know, we don't have in front of us what our policy is right now. Is it true? And so why don't you pull out what our policy is now? and write up a proposed uh, change to it to incorporate what we're talking about here that, you know, network upgrades for uh, um, single family or duplex residential properties, da, da, da. And, but for commercial properties, it's da, da, da. That would take care of the solar farms. And for, uh, you know, new subdivision or something, because we got to think how we word this. So, why don't you start working on wording for that? I don't think we need this tomorrow. We, you know, we've already agreed for this case at hand how to handle it, and then come back to us next month with the with the proposed uh, wording change for the uh, for the installation policy. Sounds great. I have a draft going. Okay. Good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good suggestion. Um, one. Quick question: What would you, for the wording of the policy, what would you call the, call the entity that's the, like the the builder, in a case like that? You know what I mean? Uh, would you just would, con Develop developer? Developer. Yeah, yeah developer. developer. Right okay, word. that's a good word. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I mean, we probably gonna need to come up with a cutoff. You know, if somebody's building two new homes. Uh, that's we'll, fine. Sure. We'll pick. So, we'll pick over. And how? Thing. Where you call that cutoff is you know a little, little. With the draft, thing. we'll be able to think about that, won't we? That's yeah. Okay. Great. <clears throat> um. Thanks for your comments on the annual review document. It looks pretty good. I will, nothing really we need to discuss about that. Craig, thanks for your compliment. Um, we will, um, we being the Royal, we, I mean, I will make it into an electronic um, survey document and um, send an email out to the group to complete it. And um, we'll do this every June. I think we should do it every June before the end of our fiscal year. I I read the uh, document, looked fine to me, the, the two um, suggestions on it. And so, uh, you know, I did read it and I think it, think it looks good as it stands. Great, okay. So yeah, okay. re regarding the legalese we were just talking about a minute ago, mm -hmm. you know, you know Chuck Damari, right? 
Mm -hmm. you, want to, you might want to send it by him and ask him to give his input because he's a lawyer and he's been on our, our um, zoning board. So he probably knows all the words. Um, just see if it's just a suggestion. You don't have to. Okay. Consider it. All right. Um, yeah, I'll think about it. Our, I mean, our our policies are not legalese policies, most of them. Well, um, you want to make the reason you write them legalese is so you don't get stuck in trouble. That's true. We don't yeah. want a developer taking us to court. Yeah, right. And that's what I get worried about when we set a number of, if it's more than so many houses, right. and that's like, hmm, so how do you defend a policy like that yeah right a, a developer is going to get a lawyer and they're going to say well this says this here and therefore your mm -hmm. policies moot right yeah that's a good suggestion um I'll, also, uh, yeah so we could check and see what leverett uh, does on this our, our fallback to so many things right <laughs> well for them i i i does it apply though because they well, I guess it, it would be the same situation for new ones because although they installed to everybody, there's places that didn't exist when they yeah, built. Yeah, we don't know what they're yeah. doing going forward on new. Yeah, they've got to have something up there to plug into. Um, yeah. To drop. So yeah, they either have to go into a splice case uh, or go back along the line. Or yeah, but I assume they have MSTs, right? I I haven't looked closely at Leverett. I think I think they have MSTs too. Do they have MSTs though, if it's an active E? Um, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, you've got to plug fiber into something. I, mm, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It, it's either that or you splice in a splice case, which is much less convenient. So, uh, all right, I'll, um, yeah, I'll have a, a, a draft um, by, by next one. And we are just whipping through this meeting. Um, so last thing to talk about, unless anyone has any other items, is how to handle our upcoming contract with Crocker. And I'm not going to get into the details too much because I think that we should have an executive session for that one. And we don't have the details yet to, to discuss. But there's um, several... Um, issues and, and things that we need to look at for this contract, whether it's a bid contract or if it's a contract extension. So the, the big one, of course, is how are we going to get our backhaul? Who, who are we going to get it from? And where are their circuits going to be located? Because the way that we need to fix the problem that happened on June 4th is to get our um, backhaul from truly diverse geographic locations. So what that would look like is um, getting say Crown Castle still out of Springfield, don't change anything there, but get Verizon out of um, Boston or New York City, or maybe it's Albany, I don't know. Anyway, New York. Um, and so we have a redundant core circuit because right now the problem is everything goes through Springfield. So Crocker says you need to get a, another diverse location for that. Um, they have received new competitive pricing from Crown Castle. The cheap of bandwidth or the, the cost of bandwidth keeps coming down and down, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we're locked in until 2022 with Crown Castle for their, the three year term that we signed on with them to buy back haul. Um, but apparently they're open to changing the terms of that contract. Um, and that would be approximately $1,200 a month for 10 gig. Right now we're paying 1470 ish for that. And it's actually costing us 3,500, but Crocker is picking up half of that bill. So it's pretty dramatic. Um, and then there's a similar deal for Verizon, another 10 gig. So it's a little ridiculous that we would be paying for 10 gigs, but um, there's a possibility that it wouldn't cost us anything more or not much more than what we're paying now. So Gail, um, Crown Castle is reducing their 
price by like 50 percent is it i mean yep. wow that's that's um yeah All right. yeah yep um a catch to get this kind of pricing um you have to lock into a five-year contract i've already told crocker we can't do that you know when, for a municipality right the the limit is three years so we can't do that um but Crocker could, right? Crocker could sign this contract with Verizon or Crown Castle for a five-year kind of resell the, not resell, I don't even know what the word is, but let us use that bandwidth for our main um, backhaul and redundant backhaul, and then maybe also use it with their other customers. Um, Something that's confusing to me about this did the town of Shutesbury actually sign a contract with Crown Castle? Because no. Bill for the call comes from Crocker. Yeah. Not we don't pay Crown Castle anything. We pay Crocker, and it's a line item on the Crocker bill for the Crown Castle backhaul, also for the MBI backhaul. Uh, and 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 Crocker is Crown Castle's customer, not us. Right. Correct. So um, Crocker would have to take, in, in my mind, Crocker is going to have to take on that risk themselves that to do whatever they need to do with Crown Castle and Verizon to work a contract structure that that's going to work for them. And then, you know, basically have a line item like they always have in our contract, which just says we'll provide you something like, you know, at least 10 gig of um, mainline backhaul and at least five gig of backup backhaul from these three redundant or, you know, or disparate geographic areas. So, you know, something like that. And Gail, that would be, that would be what they'd have to say if they were extending the contract for one, one Or, year. yeah. Or, I mean, it also applies if we go out to bid again that that you know that yeah that's going to be a we can we can price or not price it but we can put that in the um in the contract that that's a requirement and then they can structure it however they want on their end as long as they meet our requirement um did i miss anything important i had someone was at the door I think um while i was gone <laughs> i'm sorry no, no, just just talking about the the, the backhaul options and how that would play into into the contracts, okay. mm -hmm. um, and I I don't even know how much you have to put into the notes, Jim. Except you know okay. something like we discussed okay. um, upcoming contracts, backhaul options, redundancy. Okay, I'll do that. All right. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's one one thing we need to consider in the contract. Um, who are we getting the backhaul from? Where where are the circuits located? Now, item two is, can we share or sell any of this access, excess bandwidth with others? This isn't really a Shootsbury question because again, it's our contract with the backhaul provider is not with us, but it's something for Crocker to think about. It's kind of like, hey, can you give us a good deal and then go make another deal with maybe Westfield or um, you know, other surrounding towns because they are um, have no backup options in my understanding. You know, I remember when Leverett was first up and running and uh, it was a meeting there Peter DeRico had and um, Matt Crocker was there and Matt was explaining how the, um, the backhaul was working that Crocker had a contract with the Chicopee school system to provide their uh, service, yeah. and, they're, and they were they're totally double dipping. <laughs> exactly, they're yeah. running like seven a.m. to three p.m., and then and that's the low demand time in Leverett. And then right as the school is shutting down, it was when people are coming home from work in Leverett, and Leverett demands going up. And so I'm thinking, hmm, well, this is a pretty good deal for you, Matt, that you're able to sell the same product to two different people. Um, so. Yeah, but I mean, kudos for them for you know doing doing what they need to do for a business perspective. I don't, 
Yeah. I, I, when I heard that and people were like mad about it, I'm like, what's the big deal? Like everyone's getting what they want. And yeah. you know, it's, and it's, it shows this precedent for this and, and yeah. history that, uh, so. Yeah. And I, when we had talked about this years ago, I thought that it was technically impossible to share bandwidth without sharing a common ISP, but Crocker says that's not the case, that it, it's going to require um, reworking our network and installing some special hardware to split the bandwidth that comes in, um, but it could be done. Um, so it might be a really nice um, partnership with Westfield Gas and Electric, you know, or and or Wired West and or surrounding towns like Leverett, because in my meeting that I had with Graham and the Leverett team when we were discussing this a couple of weeks ago about, hey, can we just like hook up as a residential customer to get our, our backup here? You're supplying a gig. They don't have enough. Unlike us, they're, they're only buying a couple gigs. Um, so they do not have any excess. They could not support us in the case of an outage. Um, so anyway, this might be beneficial to them too. And the other, the other tricky bit um, is just um, where, where two different you know, jurisdictions are sharing the same you know, 10 gig site that someone has to administer that switch. And you, so, you know, is it, is it Westfield? Is it Crocker? You know, there's, there's a little bit of, uh, yeah, so, somehow or other one, one of the, one of the sharing entities has to, has to be in charge of the switch, which is, you know, which is a, an interesting sort of a, yeah, just a, an agreement that they have to come to. So. Right. Right. Um, all right, so another thing that I want to talk about, I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, but um, people are still not thrilled with Crocker's tech support. This model of calling into a answering service and then waiting and getting a call back, um, my sense is that there's only like maybe one or two technicians who can actually help customers there at any time. Um, and um, and that this came up because, um, two people came up to me at town meeting and complained about, thank you so much. We love the broadband service. This is just so great that we have this in town and Crocker's tech support is not good. Um, yeah. Was it, that when, when they totally were out of, out of service or this is just a, when no. they no, no, this was unrelated to that of, um, and I, I understand it um, from a customer service perspective for you to call and then talk to an operator and explain your whole problem and then hang up the phone and then wait around for, you know, they've gotten better. It's like, it's less than an hour, but wait around for the technician to call back and then you explain the whole thing again. And then you finally get help. It's just, have these, people okay. called, have these people called AT&T or Verizon recently? <laughs> yeah. You know, what, yeah. one, one improvement would be that you- I'm, I'm not defending Crocker. I'm yeah, not, I, 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 I don't want that to be our benchmark. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I agree. I agree. My, my one, experience one suggestion to Crocker would be that you don't have to explain the whole problem uh, the first time. You just call the answering service and say, I have a problem, Crocker, call me back. I mean, that might be, because that is horrible when you- go through all this sort of stuff and, you know, and it's irrelevant because they can't hand it on and it's a waste of time. So that would be, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Steve, but yours. Well, I was just to say my experience has been very good, but you know, they may recognize my name and uh, get back to me quickly. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I had, I, in support of Crocker, if you've ever tried to deal with OTT and, and Leverett, boy, it, it, Crocker begins to really shine by comparison. I've just had awful experiences, you know, mm. and, you know when I want to switch a router, you know, and going, it's just it's been hell. It takes hours, hours and talking to answering services and everything else. I, 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 I am far more supportive of Crocker than I am, for example, of, you know, of OTT, which is, um, a comparison that is, I think, an important one to make. Yeah, probably. yeah, yeah. I'm not into AT and T or Verizon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're in a different league altogether. But yeah, they're another. Well, AT and T is, is basically in our league. So I. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here, surely is another problem to it, and that is, it's classic that if I have a a, a Crocker problem, then I can't be at home 
I can't be waiting at home for a phone call from them because it won't work. Um, you know, uh, I don't have cell phone service. And so that, that, that actually, when you think about it, you've, you've, for me, I've walked up the hill to cell phone service. I don't want to be standing out there in the winter with my cell phone. Yeah. You know. So, so there is, there, there is this interesting sort of like uh, the callback has to be really, really quick. And there should be no story that you have to tell them that, that it would be, if you're talking to Tim Otto about it, point out this this thing that 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 it's not easy for me to be somewhere where I can get called back <laughs> and and you know and I probably you know I won't be there if it's going to take 15 minutes or I might not be there especially it's January so so yeah um what do you reckon um the the, the answering service just sort of says okay uh, got it someone will call you back you know within some amount of minutes, and um, and don't tell me anything. Tell the tell the um, tell the Crocker person. Uh, what do you? Would that be? Uh, that would have to improve it, right? Yeah, yeah. That's I, yeah. This is a this is a what like what are the ideas? So that that's a great idea of no explanation um, in trying to get that callback time to like you know less than fifteen minutes, like very very quick. Um, Another one is having actual technicians instead of an answering service answer the phone. That's Another one. That's expensive, and that's mm -hmm. and then that still backs up. You know what, what happens when he's on another call. You know that 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 one's not very. Yeah, um, no, yeah. I agree. But, but pri yeah. primarily, it could it could go to a technician, and then if they're backed up, an operator could be like, "It's going to be you know thirty minutes or forty five minutes before you get a call back on this one." Um, Another idea is um, uh, offering premium business service where individuals yes, could, right. could pay extra to have um, better access to ex expert technicians. Um, the, and the, re idea. <laughs> the, the reason I'm, I'm, yeah, the reason I, it's a little weird, but the reason I'm throwing it out there is because I've asked some people about how much would you pay for, for better service. <clears throat> how much, how much would it be? <clears throat> and I've heard everything from about 10 to $20 extra per month. Wow. Oh, wow. Right. I was, I was, I was shocked. I was shocked. So the people who I've got complaints from said um, they really want to see that happen, but I don't want to put that on everybody because we want to keep this affordable. So anyway, yeah. And it's the an idea is Crocker. I don't think Crocker is going to go out and hire extra techs if we do this. So if by paying extra, some people get put at the head of the line, then everybody else is going to be even slower. Or... Steve, but they do have, they do have a tech on, on call and you would end up with that phone number if you were paying the premium. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, you, you don't, you, you, you would, you would be paging the number that, that will really, you know, so yeah, it, it could, um, no, it, so, it could work. So Wired West, Wired West has always had this policy that you, that there are business accounts, they generally cost a lot more and you get, I don't remember what are all the various things that one can get. Mm -hmm. And of course, Jim Draw's point is why leave that money on the table? If these people are willing to pay the extra money, we should, yes. we should get it. And Crocker um, will be happy to provide an extra service for an extra charge. Yeah, I mean they 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 will be able to they'll be able to work out the business model that 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 that'll you know that'll be fine for them. So we and could regarding... you know if if they want to do this, we could stay out of it completely, right? This is you know well, it's not it, like it, there's a... well, wait, wait, wait. but but if they're going to charge more, we want to <laughs> yeah, that's true. We, we want to cut. We want to yeah. cut. <laughs> Well, yes, and 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 you will want to cut because they will be people who will call you more often. Because it's true, if something if yeah, if anything's wrong, they'll be saying, "Hey, I'm your business card." So yeah. Well, and so the, another another important thing for us to think about as we move towards towards going out to bid again is that if we just let Crocker set up the rules for this, then when we go out to bid and we don't go with Crocker, now all of a sudden this business is going to have to completely come up with new everything, right? Um, I, we, think that, we, I think that if we're gonna offer a business class service, that should be something that we are offering. Mm, and then we mm -hmm. make sure our that provider provides it. And then, and then when we go out to bid again, we have to say, all right, you have to be able to meet this standard. 
No, I, I think your business, you, I think your provider will be the crowd doing it. And, and uh, if you have a description of what the performance is, then you would just put it in the next bid as well. You would just say, and we have this business class. They'll be happy to bid on it because it's, um, you know, it's, it's more money. I mean, bigger service. Yeah. All right. So those are just um, ideas that I'll, I'll keep in mind um, as we sure. start start talking about this. Um, it is uh, it's going to be a process because we're going to have to decide if we, you know, kind of how deeply do we want to launch into discussions with Crocker about a contract extension versus just saying, no, no, we're, we're, we're just going to go out to bid again. Um, so I've already told them that the only way we're going to do an extension is if you can do a, do a price reduction ah, as, as part of it. Um, we're, 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 we won't entertain it unless and, that's and, included. And what are the legalities of this from a town? What does Bucky, Becky say? Do we have the option of extending? Is that, I assume we do. As far as I know, I think we talked about this three years ago of like, well, what happens after three years? And I think that that is, is an option, but I don't know how you go about it. Like how much can you ch change the contract to do an extension or does it have to be an extension of your exact same thing, but you can, you know, just lower the price. I, I don't know. So the that's contract, another thing to look into. The contract was extendable. And, and I think it, uh, the contract says mutually agreeable things are, are on the table. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did they sound like it was a possibility? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think they're highly motivated. Um, you know, we have a very good re working relationship with them, and um, um, I think that the onboarding was certainly a huge lift to get everyone up and running. But now, you know, well, minus like technical glitches, but yeah. uh, that take down the whole network. Besides that everything works pretty well. You know, we, we were watching the support tickets come in. It, um, you know, they're not getting hundreds and hundreds of um, tickets coming in from, from Shootsbury, you know, it's really leveled yeah. off and, um, and you know. A month, 30 a month if, if they don't yeah. do anything wrong. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I, think, I think this could be mutually beneficial. Um, if, if we can work out favorable terms to do an extension. I think we should keep in mind that they need us. Um, they started out with Leverett and Leverett dumped them. If they start out with us and we dump them, it makes them look bad. So right. I think we, yeah. have, we, have, we have leverage here. We have power here, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, they are really trying to please us. I, 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 right. I, I, I mean, that's I, good. I know about the lever, you know, like the lever problems if they, you know, but that was earlier in the game and I won't get into the, you know, the reasons yeah, why. Reg regardless of whether yeah. they were dumped for good reason or not, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Other towns are going to be nervous about hiring them on if their first two mm -hmm. customers didn't renew. Why? Well, I, I and, and I think they're going to go after other, other, you know, other towns as well. I think I, think I am sure right. they will. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Yeah, I yeah. agree. And you know, this health, healthy competition is is great. So some of these, you know, types of conversations we should hold for executive session. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Um, yeah. you know, remember everything that we're we're saying here is is recorded. So um, yeah, I'll I'll keep you uh, up to date on the details. As, as they come, I'm kind of letting Crocker take the lead on this of, of giving us some different options um, and then figuring out how far down this road we wanna go um, of, of a renewal. But like I said, I, I, think, I think it could be good. Um, and we definitely wanna look at uh, the potential. And Gail, I would suggest when you know questions come up about just what we can do in a contract and not talk to Donna McNichol Yes. And I, my take is I, you can just contact her because unlike any other department in town, we have a separate line item in our budget for legal costs. So, um, you know, the town covers the legal costs for all the other departments. So that's why, you know, other department heads would have to go through Becky to get Becky authorized talking to Donna because 
the, the town just has a certain uh, legal budget, but um, since we, you know, if uh, we can pay Donna out of our budget, so um, I don't think there'd be any reason for you not just to contact her directly. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, and, um, you know, I'll just ask, can it, you know, can we have a uh, 15 to 20 minute conversation about um, how we can structure and work with this up upcoming contract um, to start this off and then probably have more conversations over the next year. And at Gail, in the in the um, in that Lever MLP meeting we went to, I noticed on their minutes uh, that they seem to have just have a routine uh, line at the bottom to go into executive session if needed. Uh, you might want to start putting that on on our meeting um, uh, minutes, just so that we do have the option to go into executive session if we want to talk about this. Because otherwise, you know, otherwise we'll always be in the situation where we don't talk about it um, and, you know, and hedge. So. Great. I will start putting that on our agenda as just a always item. Yeah. Um, Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. That is it for me. Does anyone have anything else? Yeah. You know, any update on the, um, but the, the uh, oh yes, the EBBP. Thank you. Yeah, I couldn't think of the acronym, but <laughs> the yeah. tongue twister acronym. Yeah. So uh, yes, um, I did uh, reach out to Natalie Blay. Um, she, in turn, helped me get in touch with Jim McGovern. So I spoke to a uh, one of his staffers signed a release of information form before they can help anyone. You have to sign this this form so they can talk about you with who they need to talk about in the on because it's a federal issue now so um they are on it um right after i don't know if it was something that jim mcgovern's office did or is just a coincidence but the day after crocker was approved and <laughs> usac said oh no they're good they're good but they're still not on the website. So we're closer. <laughs> um, and the staffer said that he, he promised he would stay on it until it's done. So Kathy from Crocker is checking with him every day. Um, um, yeah, I feel like I've pushed the levers we have. And it is sad to me that we've lost a month. But we did our best. So it's the FCC is where the problem is not getting there? No. It's USAC, um, the Universal Service Administration Company, something like that. Universal Services. Hold on, I have to, I have to look up what that acronym means. Well, and it, so are they a, a contractor for the federal government? Is that? They're the governmental organization that administrates um, the lifeline and this EBBP thing. So they, they're connected to the FCC somehow. I don't know if what the relationship is. So, and so they administer both Lifeline and this, the new one. Hmm. Yep. Universal Service Administrative Company. Hmm. Oh, here's an interesting factoid. USAC is not a federal government agency or a department or a government controlled corporation. So they must be one of those quasi-private relationships. Or, or but, a completely private business that is a good yeah. contracted. Uh, yeah, they say they un are under the direction of the FCC though. Yeah. USAC administers the Universal Service Fund under the direction of the Federal Communications Commission. Hmm. Well, yep. Um, so that's it. Anything else?
a bit of good news on the hut new on the hut list of uh, there, there were no um, there were no yeah, um, the, last, the month before we'd had five uh, drops that got knocked down but there were zero drops chewed or knocked down last month so that was kind of good to see good good oh and uh, Graham I did give the hub a little sweep and shook out the um, mats in there because I, I while I was waiting things to update and upload um, there's a lot of pollen in there <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's that's not good yeah. All right. Um, well, um, we will talk then. Um, when is our next meeting? It is July 21st. Okay. Uh, the, um, the Klein device. Oh, thank you, Jim. I totally, I had a note on here and I totally forgot it. Sorry about that. All right, so um, Jim, do you want to explain what that is and, wh and why you think it would be useful to get? Well, it, I, it really is for, for $160, um, it would give us the ability to, or give me the ability and, and Graham as well, because we would prob probably be the two who are using it, uh, the ability to um, uh, find faulty ethernet cables during service calls and I mean, cables of any sort for that matter, uh, it's, it's, this would give us the ability to, you know, to test all this out properly. And I can think of a couple of service calls that I've done in the past where this sure would have been handy. And, but you know, there are workarounds for it. And if we don't want to spend the money, that's, that's fine too. But, but um, it, I've, I've got one coming up that, that this, this tool would be very helpful, but it's, it's really your decision as to whether so, to describe an example of it, yeah, if a Cat6 cable at the far end of the house, you, you plug in at one end, you <clears> unattach <throat> it, and you put a far end device in. Uh, I assume it's got a far end device, right? And yeah, you know, yeah, you put something on the other end. You, yeah, and it tells you the, the, the cable is good and no, it, and no mouse has bit any of the pairs. So, you know, yeah. um, it, it's definitely useful to be able to, to, be able to verify that a cable's um, I've, I've got one of those from when I used to make my own cables. Um, you can pick them up on Amazon if you check around for, for 10, 15 bucks. They're not very much money. Well, there's some cheap ones, but um, I, um, and I'm not sure which fancier. Well, all, all the one I do, all I, all mine does is just connect connectivity. Is this pin connected to that pin? If the quality is yeah. not, it doesn't. Oh, tell oh yeah. Well, that. That, well, the you know the Klein device tells you how long the cable is, and uh, I see, I see. Okay, I mean, that's... It's, it's a much, it's a pretty, it's a very, it's it's a much more sophisticated device. That's a whole nother beast. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole nother level. It, it's what you know, it's what Collins and others carry around in their truck. You know, when they when they go on certain, you know, you know when they when they are out uh, doing uh, connect, you know, wiring up people's homes and stuff like this. I'm sure that sure. Certex folks have one too. I think it's, I think it's worth the money, and you know, you can even. Test a patch cord that you're suspect about. You know, it's so it's, uh, it sounds like Craig's got one of them. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, um, uh, I, I'd say 160 bucks is uh, it'll be occasionally um, a, a useful thing. And but, not, but just to understand, this is just something that's used for in-house work. It's it's nothing that's testing anything in the network or the drops. Is that correct? Right. No, it's not a fiber device. It's not a fiber device. It's yeah. it's what happens inside the home. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't test Ethernet. It just tests the cable. So you unplug it from Ethernet to verify the cable. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. How many how many um, calls are you going out these days, Jim? I, I don't. I, I just haven't seen any in like six months. I don't know if you're you're going out and I don't well, see them or. Well. Uh, uh, clearly, there are fewer and fewer of them, and that's one of the reasons why I say if if it's not appropriate to spend the money, then that's fine too. I can I can always usually find ways around it, but I have one coming up um, in, uh, shortly that uh, this would be particularly handy. But again, you know, it's it's not a crucial kind of a thing. It would be nice to have it. Yeah, who's who's it for? Which customer? Uh, this is for um, Melody Chartier and and you know and Mary Jo. They've been having a lot of trouble with the. Are phone they still lines. having problems? Yeah, they're still. I, I, I don't know what is going on, and and Jory's been in the middle of it, and I've been getting 
all, all these emails and and I, I'm gonna, and I my last one was well if you know we we may be getting this device and that may help us trace out stuff that's in the home and and it may not be a problem in the home at all I, I it seems that it, it, you know the problem is due you know to our network I, and I and and it's a problem that may not have been fixed by the new uh, service. Uh, oh, I got the phone thing is going. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> At any rate, it's complicated. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is maybe something we should just have Crocker do. Uh, no, well, they don't. To receive a discount, I'm gonna. Oh God! Hold, just get hold on. <laughs> Wiring. Jim wiring. is going to go smash his answering machine. We I mean, this is a service. This is a service we're offering our customers only because these guys want to do it, right? If that we helps. didn't have Jim, we would just say, "I'm sorry, you're out of luck." Yeah, yeah. Wiring in the house is always beyond, you know, beyond the service. And right. Jim, yeah. when you first sent something out, there was a choice. There was one unit that was like two thousand dollars, and then there was oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. one hundred sixty. So. So you're saying we don't need this the the really high priced one the the hundred sixty dollar one would be perfectly adequate. Yeah, well, well, the two thousand dollar one is made by Fluke, and Fluke is the is the standard for. I mean, I have a Fluke multimeter, and you know, I wouldn't leave home without it. Uh, you know, it's a it's a great device, and you know, there are none better out there. But you know, the, it's very pricey stuff, and worth every penny if you really were using it day in and day out. I would get a Fluke, but. But the Klein is um, is uh, is sort of the next level down, so to speak. And then there are the really you know the fifteen dollar ones you can get on eBay, but those those don't do any any of the sorts of things that the you know that that the Klein device. Does. No, no. The the main thing therefore is making sure you connected the wires correctly. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. The, the two the two thousand dollar unit is uh, for certifying uh, for certifying uh, category six category five you know yeah you're yeah. actually giving a test and saying yes this passes and uh, and you know you you get contractors to you know it's how you prove that the hunt that you know the ten thousand jacks in your building are all past the test so um, my feeling is bring a 50 foot patch cable go around that segment if everything works then you say i'm sorry you have to call an electrician and, and that's why out. i have a 50 foot patch cord <laughs> right <laughs> that's exactly the reason you run it through the house yeah right but i don't know jim would it i mean is is would your job be easier having having this sure well when the issue turns up it, it sure would be handy to have it uh yeah because, because I mean, you can say I well it's in the world it. and you got to hire some you know and you got to and, and you know and, you, and this I is mean, why you're having trouble yeah. and let's, let's buy it yeah, I mean, for one hundred sixty dollars, I say. Even if yeah, if it save it saves on one or two service calls, it's paid yeah. for itself. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Or even if it's not really paying for itself, if if Jim, his time, even though we're not paying Jim for doing this, if if he can get a job done easier, yeah, there's a benefit to us there. Oh, I just okay would that. say think about how you buy it, um, because. Home Depot <laughs> and, the, and, and the town's credit card. <laughs> yeah, you put on the town's credit card, then it's fine. Yeah. So, All right. So, um, Becky on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, how, what do you need for me to, for that, Jim? Should I just send an email to Becky and copy you on it saying, you know, we've approved a purchase of this up to $180 for this device? Yes, I was just thinking of writing her and saying, uh, Becky, can you call Home Depot? And because Home Depot doesn't stock these, but they will get them in a day or so, and uh, we do want to put it on the town's credit card to avoid the taxes. And and then and then it'll and then the billing will be in the system. And Steve, I guess that'll make it somewhat easy to transfer it over to Gail, et cetera, et cetera, and do all those kinds of bookkeeping things. Yes, yeah, just copy me on any. Uh invoice paperwork anything like that so, jim okay. jim if gail writes the email then becky won't have to phone two more people or whatever you know, yeah so you still might gail probably you are the best person. yeah how about how about jim you write the email send it to me i yeah. will forward it to becky Good. that that's much I, I think you get along with becky a lot better than i do so. <laughs> we're not on great speaking terms right now all right <laughs> and you and jim you may want to call home depot to have them order it because you want this to happen 
So. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, I think she's got to make the call to Home Depot with the credit card and all of that. Uh, and I'll just and we'll just. Yeah, she needs a. It's a. It's actually a tax exempt ID number. She needs to give them. Yeah. 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 So so that's, I got that's it. part of the the charge we have. So I will send the email to you, Gail, and then and then and then we'll just sit back. Yeah, I'll just forward it saying it. This this is approved. Please do it. Okay. All right. All right. Good job, okay. team. Look at this. Exactly 645. I love we that. just oh, made it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're good. <laughs> all right. I'll talk to you all next month. Okay. okay. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.